Chapter 1 of the Dhammapada Translated by Max Muller This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recording by Jyoti Taravanat The Dhammapada a collection of verses being one of the canonical books of the buddhists translated from pali by f max muller chapter one the twin verses one all that we are is the result of what we have thought it is founded on our thoughts it is made up of our thoughts if a man speaks or acts with an evil thought pain follows him as the wheel follows the foot of the ox that draws the carriage two all that we are is the result of what we have thought it is founded on our thoughts it is made up of our thoughts if a man speaks or acts with a pure thought happiness follows him like a shadow that never leaves him three he abused me he beat me he defeated me he robbed me in those who harbor such thoughts hatred will never cease four he abused me he beat me he defeated me he robbed me in those who do not harbor such thoughts hatred will cease five for hatred does not cease by hatred at any time hatred ceases by love this is an old rule six the world does not know that we must all come to an end here but those who know it their quarrels cease at once seven he who lives looking for pleasures only his senses uncontrolled immoderate in his food idle and weak mara the temper will certainly overthrow him as a wind throws down a weak tree eight he who lives without looking for pleasures his senses well controlled moderate in his food faithful and strong him mara will certainly not overthrow any more than the wind throws down a rocky mountain nine he who wishes to put on the yellow dress without having cleansed himself from sin who disregards temperance and truth is unworthy of the yellow dress ten but he who has cleansed himself from sin is well grounded in all virtues and regards also temperance and truth he is indeed worthy of the yellow dress eleven they who imagine truth in untruth and see untruth in truth never arrive at truth but follow vain desires twelve they who know truth in truth and untruth in untruth arrive at truth and follow true desires thirteen as rain breaks through an ill-thatched house passion will break through an unreflecting mind fourteen as rain does not break through a well-thatched house 
passion will not break through a well-reflecting mind. 15. The evil doer mourns in this world, and he mourns in the next. He mourns in both. He mourns and suffers when he sees the evil of his own work. 16. The virtuous man delights in this world, and he delights in the next. He delights in both. He delights and rejoices when he sees the purity of his own work. 17. The evildoer suffers in this world, and he suffers in the next. He suffers in both. He suffers when he thinks of the evil he has done. He suffers more when going on the evil path. 18. The virtuous man is happy in this world, and he is happy in the next. He is happy in both. He is happy when he thinks of the good he has done. He is still more happy when going on the good path. 19. The thoughtless man, even if he can recite a large portion of the law, but is not a doer of it, has no share in the priesthood, but is like a cowherd counting the cows of others. 20. The follower of the law, even if he can recite only a small portion of the law, but having forsaken passion and hatred and foolishness, possesses true knowledge and serenity of mind, he, caring for nothing in this world, or that to come, has indeed a share in the priesthood. End of chapter 1 Recording by Jyoti Taravanath Chapter 2 of the Dhammapada Translated by Max Muller this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jyoti Taravanat. Chapter 2 On Earnestness 21. Earnestness is the path of immortality, nirvana. Thoughtlessness, the path of death. Those who are in earnest do not die. Those who are thoughtless are as if dead already. 22. Those who are advanced in earnestness, having understood this clearly, delight in earnestness and rejoice in the knowledge of the Aryas, the elect. 23. These wise people meditative, steady, always possessed of strong powers, attain to nirvana, the highest happiness. 24. If an earnest person has roused himself, if he is not forgetful, if his deeds are pure, if he acts with consideration, if he restrains himself and lives according to law, then his glory will increase. 25. By rousing himself, by earnestness, by restraint and control, the wise man may make for himself an island which no flood can overwhelm. 26. Fools follow after vanity, 
men of evil wisdom. The wise man keeps earnestness as his best jewel. 27. Follow not after vanity, nor after the enjoyment of love and lust. He who is earnest and meditative obtains ample joy. 28. When the learned man drives away vanity by earnestness, he, the wise, climbing the terraced heights of wisdom, looks down upon the fools. Serene he looks upon the toiling crowd, as one that stands on a mountain looks down upon them that stands upon the plain. 29. Earnest among the thoughtless, awake among the sleepers, the wise man advances like a razor, leaving behind the hack. 30. By earnestness did Maghavan, Indira, rise to the lordship of the gods. People praise earnestness. Thoughtlessness is always blamed. 31. A bhikshu, mendicant, who delights in earnestness, who looks with fear on thoughtlessness, moves about like fire, burning all his fetters, small or large. 32. A bhikshu, mendicant, who delights in reflection, who looks with fear on thoughtlessness, cannot fall away from his perfect state. He is close upon nirvana. End of chapter 2 Recording by Jyoti Taravanat Chapter 3 of Dhammapada Translated by Max Muller This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jyoti Taravanat Chapter 3 Thought 33 As a fletcher makes straight his arrow, a wise man makes straight his trembling and unsteady thought which is difficult to guard, difficult to hold back. 34. As a fish taken from his watery home and thrown on dry ground, our thought trembles all over in order to escape the dominion of Mara, the temper. 35. It is good to tame the mind, which is difficult to hold in, and flighty rushing wherever it listeth a tamed mind brings happiness thirty six let the wise man guard his thoughts for they are difficult to perceive very artful and they rush wherever they list thoughts well guarded bring happiness thirty seven those who bridle their mind which travels far, moves about alone, is without a body, and hides in the chamber of the heart, will be free from the bonds of Mara, the temper. 38. If a man's thoughts are unsteady, if he does not know the true law, if his peace of mind is troubled, his knowledge will never be perfect. 39. If a man's thoughts are not dissipated, if his mind is not perplexed, if he has ceased to think of good or evil, then there is no fear for him while he is watchful. 40. Knowing that this body is fragile like a jar, and making this thought firm like a fortress, one should attack Mara, the temper, with the weapon of knowledge. One should watch him when conquered, and should never rest. 41. 
Before long, alas, this body will lie on the earth, despised, without understanding, like a useless log. 42. Whatever a hater may do to a hater, or an enemy to an enemy, a wrongly directed mind will do us greater mischief. 43. Not a mother, not a father will do so much, nor any other relative. A well-directed mind will do us greater service. End of chapter 3 Recording by Jyoti Taravanat Chapter 4 of Dhammapada Translated by Max Muller This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jyoti Taravanat Chapter 4 Flowers 44. Who shall overcome this earth and the world of Yama, the lord of the departed, and the world of the gods? Who shall find out the plainly shown path of virtue as a clever man finds out the right flower? 45. The disciple will overcome the earth and the world of Yama and the world of the gods. The disciple will find out the plainly shown path of virtue as a clever man finds out the right flower. 46. He who knows that this body is like froth and has learnt that it is as unsubstantial as a mirage will break the flower-pointed arrow of Mara and never see the king of death. 47. Death carries off a man who is gathering flowers, and whose mind is distracted, as a flood carries off a sleeping village. 48. Death subdues a man who is gathering flowers, and whose mind is distracted, before he is satiated in his pleasures. 49. As the bee collects nectar and departs without enduring the flower, or its colour or scent, so let a sage dwell in his village. 50. Not the perversities of others, not their sins of commission or omission, but his own misdeeds and negligencies should a sage take notice of. 51. Like a beautiful flower, full of colour, but without scent, are the fine but fruitless words of him who does not act accordingly. 52. But like a beautiful flower, full of colour and full of scent, are the fine and fruitful words of him who acts accordingly. 53. As many kinds of wreaths can be made from a heap of flowers, so many good things may be achieved by a mortal when once he is born. 54. The scent of flowers does not travel against the wind, nor that of sandalwood or of tagara and mallika flowers but the odour of good people travels even against the wind a good man pervades every place fifty five sandalwood or tagara a lotus flower or a vasiki among these sorts of perfumes, the perfume of virtue is unsurpassed. 56. Mean is the scent that comes from Thagara and sandalwood, 
the perfume of those who possess virtue rises up to the gods as the highest 57 of the people who possess these virtues who live without thoughtlessness and who are emancipated through true knowledge mara the temper never finds the way 58 59 as on a heap of rubbish cast upon the highway the lily will grow full of sweet perfume and delight thus the disciple of the truly enlightened buddha shines forth by his knowledge among those who are like rubbish among the people that walk in darkness end of chapter 4 recording by jyoti taravanat chapter 5 of dhammapada translated by max muller this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti taravanat chapter 5 the fool 60 long is the night to him who is awake long is a mile to him who is tired long is life to the foolish who do not know the true law 61 if a traveler does not meet with one who is his better or his equal let him firmly keep to his solitary journey there is no companionship with a fool 62 these sons belong to me and this wealth belongs to me with such thoughts a fool is tormented he himself does not belong to himself how much less sons and wealth sixty three the fool who knows his foolishness is wise at least so far but a fool who thinks himself wise he is called a fool indeed sixty four if a fool be associated with a wise man even all his life he will perceive the truth as little as a spoon perceives the taste of soup sixty five if an intelligent man be associated for one minute only with a wise man he will soon perceive the truth as the tongue perceives the taste of soup sixty six fools of little understanding have themselves for their greatest enemies for they do evil deeds which must bear bitter fruits sixty seven that deed is not well done of which a man must repent and the reward of which he receives crying and with a tearful face sixty eight no that deed is well done of which a man does not repent and the reward of which he receives gladly and cheerfully sixty nine as long as the evil deed done does not bear fruit the fool thinks it is like honey but when it ripens then the fool suffers grief seventy let a fool month after month eat his food like an ascetic with the tip of a blade of kusa grass yet he is not worth the sixteenth particle of those who have well weighed the law 
71. An evil deed, like newly drawn milk, does not turn suddenly. Smouldering like fire covered by ashes, it follows the fool. 72. And when the evil deed, after it has become known, brings sorrow to the fool, then it destroys his bright lot, nay, it cleaves his head. 73. Let the fool wish for a false reputation, for precedence among the bhikshus, for lordship in the convents, for worship among other people. 74. May both the layman and he who has left the world think that this is done by me. May they be subject to me in everything which is to be done or is not to be done. Thus is the mind of the fool, and his desire and pride increase. 75. One is the road that leads to wealth, another the road that leads to nirvana. If the bhikshu, the disciple of Buddha, has learnt this, he will not yearn for honour. He will strive after separation from the world. End of chapter 5 Recording by Jyoti Taravanat Chapter 6 of Dhammapada Translated by Max Muller This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jyoti Taravanat Chapter 6 The Wise Man Pandita 76 If you see an intelligent man who tells you where two treasures are to be found, who shows what is to be avoided, and administers reproofs, follow that wise man. It'll be better not worse for those who follow him seventy seven let him admonish let him teach let him forbid what is improper he will be beloved of the good by the bad he will be hated seventy eight do not have evil doers for friends do not have low people for friends have virtuous people for friends have for friends the best of men. 79. He who drinks in the law lives happily with a serene mind. The sage rejoices always in the law as preached by the elect Aryas. 80. Well makers lead the water wherever they like, Fletchers bend the arrow carpenters bend a log of wood wise people fashion themselves eighty one as a solid rock is not shaken by the wind wise people falter not amidst blame and praise eighty two wise people after they have listened to the laws become serene like a deep smooth and still lake eighty three good people walk on whatever befall the good do not prattle longing for pleasure whether touched by happiness or sorrow wise people never appear elated or depressed eighty four if whether for his own sake or for the sake of others a man wishes neither for a son nor for wealth nor for lordship and if he does not wish for his own success by unfair means then he is good wise and virtuous eighty five few are there among men who arrive at the other shore become arhats 
the other people here run up and down the shore eighty six but those who when the law has been well preached to them follow the law will pass across the dominion of death however difficult to overcome eighty seven eighty eight a wise man should leave the dark state of ordinary life and follow the bright state of the bhikshu after going from his home to a homeless state he should in his retirement look for enjoyment where there seemed to be no enjoyment leaving all pleasures behind and calling nothing his own the wise man should purge himself from all the troubles of the mind eighty nine those whose mind is well grounded in the seven elements of knowledge who without clinging to anything rejoice in freedom from attachment whose appetites have been conquered and who are full of light or free even in this world end of chapter 6 recording by jyoti taravanat chapter 7 of dhammapada translated by max muller this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by jyoti taravanat chapter 7 the venerable arhat ninety there is no suffering for him who has finished his journey and abandoned grief who has freed himself on all sides and thrown off all fetters ninety one they depart with their thoughts well collected they are not happy in their abode like swans who have left their lake they leave their house and home ninety two men who have no riches who live on recognized food who have perceived void and unconditioned freedom nirvana their path is difficult to understand like that of birds in the air ninety three he whose appetites are stilled who is not absorbed in enjoyment who has perceived void and unconditioned freedom nirvana his path is difficult to understand like that of birds in the air ninety four the gods even envy him whose senses like horses well broken in by the driver have been subdued who is free from pride and free from appetites ninety five such a one who does his duty is tolerant like the earth like indira's bolt he is like a lake without mud no new births are in store for him ninety six his thought is quiet quiet or his word and deed when he has obtained freedom by true knowledge when he has thus become a quiet man ninety seven the man who is free from credulity but knows the uncreated who has cut all ties removed all temptations renounced all desires he is the greatest of men ninety eight in a hamlet or in a forest in the deep water or on the dry land wherever venerable persons arhanta dwell that place is delightful ninety nine forests are delightful where the world finds no delight there 
the passionless will find delight for they look not for pleasures end of chapter 7 recording by jyoti taravanath chapter 8 of dhammapada translated by max muller this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti taravanath chapter 8 the thousands hundred even though a speech be a thousand of words but made up of senseless words one word of sense is better which if a man hears he becomes quiet 101 even though a gatha poem be a thousand of words but made up of senseless words one word of a gatha is better which if a man hears he becomes quiet 102 though a man recite a hundred gathas made up of senseless words one word of the law is better which if a man hears he becomes quiet 103 if one man conquer in battle a thousand times thousand men and if another conquer himself he is the greatest of conquerors hundred and four and hundred and five one's own self conquered is better than all other people not even a god a gandharva not mara with brahman could change into defeat the victory of a man who has vanquished himself and always lives under restraint hundred and six if a man for a hundred years sacrifice month after month with a thousand and if he but for one moment pay homage to a man whose soul is grounded in true knowledge better is that homage than sacrifice for a hundred years hundred and seven if a man for a hundred years worship agni fire in the forest and if he but for one moment pay homage to a man whose soul is grounded in true knowledge better is that homage than sacrifice for a hundred years hundred and eight whatever a man sacrifice in this world as an offering or as an oblation for a whole year in order to gain merit the whole of it is not worth a quarter a farthing reverence shown to the righteous is better hundred and nine he who always greets and constantly reveres the aged four things will increase to him namely life beauty happiness power hundred and ten but he who lives a hundred years vicious and unrestrained a life of one day is better if a man is virtuous and reflecting hundred and eleven and he who lives a hundred years ignorant and unrestrained a life of one day is better if a man is wise and reflecting hundred and twelve he who lives a hundred years idle and weak a life of one day is better if a man has attained firm strength hundred and thirteen and he who lives a hundred years not seeing beginning and end a life of one day is better if a man sees beginning and end hundred and fourteen and he who lives a hundred years not seeing the immortal place a life of one day is better if a man sees the immortal place hundred and fifteen and he who lives a hundred years not seeing the highest law 
a life of one day is better if a man sees the highest law end of chapter 8 recording by jyoti taravanath chapter 9 of dhammapada translated by max muller this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti taravanath chapter 9 evil 116 if a man would hasten towards the good he should keep his thought away from evil if a man does what is good slothfully his mind delights in evil 117 if a man commits a sin let him not do it again let him not delight in sin pain is the outcome of evil 118 if a man does what is good let him do it again let him delight in it happiness is the outcome of good 119 even an evil doer sees happiness as long as his evil deed has not ripened but when his evil deed has ripened then does the evil doer see evil 120 even a good man sees evil days as long as his good deed has not ripened but when his good deed has ripened then does the good man see happy days 121 let no man think highly of evil saying in his heart it will not come nigh unto me even by the falling of water drops a water pot is filled the fool becomes full of evil even if he gather it little by little hundred and twenty two let no man think lightly of good saying in his heart it will not come nigh unto me even by the falling of water drops a water pot is filled the wise man becomes full of good even if he gather it little by little 123 let a man avoid evil deeds as a merchant if he has few companions and carries much wealth avoids a dangerous road as a man who loves life avoids poison 124 he who has no wound on his hand may touch poison with his hand poison does not affect one who has no wound nor is there evil for one who does not commit evil 125 if a man offend a harmless pure and innocent person the evil falls back upon that fool like light dust thrown up against the wind 126 some people are born again evil doers go to hell righteous people go to heaven those who are free from all worldly desires attain nirvana 127 not in the sky not in the midst of the sea not if we enter into the clefts of the mountains is there known a spot in the whole world where death could not overcome the mortal end of chapter 9 recording by jyoti taravanat Chapter 10 of Dhammapada Translated by Max Muller This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jyoti Taravanat Chapter 10 Punishment 
hundred and twenty nine all men tremble at punishment all men fear death remember that you are like unto them and do not kill nor cause slaughter hundred and thirty all men tremble at punishment all men love life remember that thou art like unto them and do not kill nor cause slaughter hundred and thirty one he who seeking his own happiness punishes or kills beings who also long for happiness will not find happiness after death hundred and thirty two he who seeking his own happiness does not punish or kill beings who also long for happiness will find happiness after death hundred and thirty three do not speak harshly to anybody those who are spoken to will answer thee in the same way angry speech is painful blows for blows will touch thee hundred and thirty four if like a shattered metal plate gong thou utter not then thou hast reached nirvana contention is not known to thee hundred and thirty five as a cowherd with his staff drives his cows into the stable so do age and death drive the life of man hundred and thirty six a fool does not know when he commits his evil deeds but the wicked man burns by his own deeds as if burnt by fire hundred and thirty seven he who inflicts pain on innocent and harmless persons will soon come to one of these ten states hundred and thirty eight he will have cruel suffering loss injury of the body heavy affliction or loss of mind hundred and thirty nine or a misfortune coming from the king or a fearful acquisition or loss of relations or destruction of treasures hundred and forty or lightning fire will burn his house and when his body is destroyed the fool will go to hell hundred and forty one not nakedness not plaited hair not dirt not fasting or lying on the earth not rubbing with dust not sitting motionless can purify a mortal who has not overcome desires hundred and forty two he who though dressed in fine apparel exercises tranquillity is quiet subdued restrained chaste and has ceased to find fault with all other things he indeed is a brahmana an ascetic sramana a friar bhikshu hundred and forty three is there in this world any man so restrained by humility that he does not mind reproof as a well-trained horse the whip hundred and forty four like a well-trained horse when touched by the whip be ye active and lively and by faith by virtue by energy by meditation by discernment of the law you will overcome this great pain of reproof perfect in knowledge and in behavior and never forgetful hundred and forty five well makers lead the water wherever they like fletchers bend the arrow carpenters bend a log of wood good people fashion themselves 
End of chapter 10 Recording by Jyoti Tharavanath Chapter 11 of Dhammapada Translated by Max Muller This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jyoti Tharavanath. Chapter 11 Old Age 146. How is there laughter? How is there joy? As this world is always burning, why do you not seek a light, ye who are surrounded by darkness? 147. Look at this dressed-up lump, covered with wounds, joined together, sickly, full of many thoughts, which has no strength, no hold. 148. This body is wasted, full of sickness and frail this heap of corruption breaks to pieces life indeed ends in death 149 those white bones like gouds thrown away in the autumn what pleasure is there in looking at them 150 after a strong hold has been made of the bones, it is covered with flesh and blood, and there dwell in it old age and death, pride and deceit. 151. The brilliant chariots of kings are destroyed. The body also approaches destruction, but the virtue of good people never approaches destruction. Thus do the good say to the good. 152. A man who has learnt little grows old like an ox. His flesh grows, but his knowledge does not grow. 153. 154. Looking for the maker of this tabernacle, I shall have to run through a course of many births so long as I do not find him. And painful is birth again and again. But now, maker of the tabernacle, thou hast been seen. Thou shalt not make up this tabernacle again. All thy rafters are broken. Thy ridge pole is sundered. The mind approaching the eternal, Visankara, Nirvana, has attained to the extinction of all desires. 155 men who have not observed proper discipline and have not gained treasure in their youth perish like old herons in a lake without fish 156 men who have not observed proper discipline and have not gained treasure in their youth lie like broken bows sighing after the past End of Chapter 11 Recording by Jyoti Taravanath Chapter 12 of Dhammapada Translated by Max Muller This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox dot org recording by jyoti taravanath chapter 12 self 157 if a man hold himself dear let him watch himself carefully during one at least out of the three watches a wise man should be watchful 158 let each man direct himself first to what is proper then let him teach others thus a wise man will not suffer 
159. If a man make himself as he teaches others to be, then, being himself well subdued, he may subdue others. One's own self is indeed difficult to subdue. 160. Self is the lord of self. Who else would be the lord? With self well subdued, a man finds a lord such as few can find. 161. The evil done by oneself, self begotten, self bred, crushes the foolish as a diamond breaks a precious stone. 162. He whose wickedness is very great brings himself down to that state where his enemy wishes him to be, as a creeper does with the tree which it surrounds. 163. Bad Deeds and deeds hurtful to ourselves are easy to do what is beneficial and good that is very difficult to do 164 the foolish man who scorns the rule of the venerable arahat of the elect arya of the virtuous and follows false doctrine he bears fruit to his own destruction like the fruits of the kataka reed. 165. By oneself the evil is done. By oneself one suffers. By oneself evil is left undone. By oneself one is purified. Purity and impurity belong to oneself. No one can purify another. 166. Let no one forget his own duty for the sake of another's, however great. Let a man, after he has discerned his own duty, be always attentive to his duty. End of chapter 12. Recording by Jyoti Taravanath. Chapter 13 of Dhammapada Translated by Max Muller This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jyoti Taravana Chapter 13 The World 167 Do not follow the evil law. Do not live on in thoughtlessness. Do not follow false doctrine be not a friend of the world 168 rouse thyself do not be idle follow the law of virtue the virtuous rests in bliss in this world and in the next 169 follow the law of virtue do not follow that of sin the virtuous rests in bliss in this world and in the next 170 look upon the world as a bubble look upon it as a mirage the king of death does not see him who thus looks down upon the world 171 come look at this glittering world like unto a royal chariot the foolish are immersed in it but the wise do not touch it 172 he who formerly was reckless and afterwards became sober brightens up this world like the moon when freed from clouds 173 he whose evil deeds are covered by good deeds brightens up this world like the moon when freed from clouds 174 this world is dark few only can see here 
a few only go to heaven like birds escaped from the net 175 the swans go on the path of the sun they go through the ether by means of their miraculous power the wise are led out of this world when they have conquered mara and his train 176 if a man has transgressed one law and speaks lies and scoffs at another world there is no evil he will not do 177 the uncharitable do not go to the world of the gods fools only do not praise liberality a wise man rejoices in liberality and through it becomes blessed in the other world 178 better than sovereignty over the earth better than going to heaven better than lordship over all worlds is the reward of the first step in holiness End of chapter 13 Recording by Jyoti Taravanat Chapter 14 of Dhammapada Translated by Max Muller This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recording by Jyoti Taravanat Chapter 14 The Buddha The Awakened 179 He whose conquest is not conquered again, into whose conquest no one in this world enters, by what track can you lead him the awakened the omniscient the trackless 180 he whom no desire with its snares and poisons can lead astray by what track can you lead him the awakened the omniscient the trackless 181 even the gods envy those who are awakened and not forgetful who are given to meditation who are wise and who delight in the repose of retirement from the world 182 difficult to obtain is the conception of men difficult is the life of mortals difficult is the hearing of the true law difficult is the birth of the awakened the attainment of buddhahood 183 not to commit any sin to do good and to purify one's mind that is the teaching of all the awakened 184 the awakened call patience the highest penance long-suffering the highest nirvana for he is not an anchorite pravagita who strikes others he is not an ascetic samana who insults others 185 not to blame not to strike to live restrained under the law to be moderate in eating to sleep and sit alone and to dwell on the highest thoughts this is the teaching of the awakened 186 there is no satisfying lusts even by a shower of gold pieces he who knows that lusts have a short taste and cause pain he is wise 187 even in heavenly pleasures he finds no satisfaction the disciple 
who is fully awakened delights only in the destruction of all desires 188 men driven by fear go to many a refuge to mountains and forests to groves and sacred trees 189 but that is not a safe refuge that is not the best refuge a man is not delivered from all pains after having gone to that refuge 190 he who takes refuge with buddha the law and the church he who with clear understanding sees the four holy truths 191 namely pain the origin of pain the destruction of pain and the eightfold holy way that leads to the quietening of pain 192 that is the safe refuge that is the best refuge having gone to that refuge a man is delivered from all pain 193 a supernatural person a buddha is not easily found he is not born everywhere wherever such a sage is born that race prospers 194 happy is the arising of the awakened happy is the teaching of the true law happy is peace in the church happy is the devotion of those who are at peace 195 196 he who pays homage to those who deserve homage whether the awakened buddha or their disciples those who have overcome the host of evils and crossed the flood of sorrow he who pays homage to such as have found deliverance and know no fear his merit can never be measured by anybody end of chapter 14 recording by jyoti taravnat chapter 15 of dhammapada translated by max muller this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jyoti Taravanat. Chapter 15 Happiness 197. Let us live happily then, not hating those who hate us. Among men who hate us, let us dwell free from hatred. 198 let us live happily then free from ailments among the ailing among men who are ailing let us dwell free from ailments 199 let us live happily then free from greed among the greedy among men who are greedy let us dwell free from greed 200 let us live happily then though we call nothing our own we shall be like the bright gods feeding on happiness 201 victory breeds hatred for the conquered is unhappy he who has given up both victory and defeat he the contented is happy 202 there is no fire like passion there is no losing throw like hatred there is no pain like this body there is no 
happiness higher than rest 203 hunger is the worst of diseases the body the greatest of pains if one knows this truly that is nirvana the highest happiness 204 health is the greatest of gifts contentedness the best riches trust is the best of relationships nirvana the highest happiness 205 he who has tasted the sweetness of solitude and tranquillity is free from fear and free from sin while he tastes the sweetness of drinking in the law 206 the sight of the elect arya is good to live with him is always happiness if a man does not see fools he will be truly happy 207 he who walks in the company of fools suffers a long way company with fools as with an enemy is always painful company with the wise is pleasure like meeting with kinsfolk 208 therefore one ought to follow the wise the intelligent the learned the much enduring the dutiful the elect one not to follow a good and wise man as the moon follows the path of the stars end of chapter 15 recording by jyoti taravanath chapter 16 of dhammapada translated by max muller this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti taravanath chapter 16 pleasure 209 he who gives himself to vanity and does not give himself to meditation forgetting the real aim of life and grasping at pleasure will in time envy him who has exerted himself in meditation 210 let no man ever look for what is pleasant or what is unpleasant not to see what is pleasant is pain and it is pain to see what is unpleasant 211 let therefore no man love anything loss of the beloved is evil those who love nothing and hate nothing have no fetters 212 from pleasure comes grief from pleasure comes fear he who is free from pleasure knows neither grief nor fear 213 from affection comes grief from affection comes fear he who is free from affection knows neither grief nor fear 214 from lust comes grief from lust comes fear he who is free from lust knows neither grief nor fear 215 from love comes grief from love comes fear he who is free from love knows neither grief nor fear 216 from greed comes grief from greed comes fear 
he who is free from greed knows neither grief nor fear 217 he who possesses virtue and intelligence who is just speaks the truth and does what is his own business him the world will hold dear 218 he in whom a desire for the ineffable nirvana has sprung up who is satisfied in his mind and whose thoughts are not bewildered by love he is called urdhvam srotas carried upwards by the stream 219 kinsmen friends and lovers salute a man who has been long away and returns safe from afar 220 in like manner his good works receive him who has done good and has gone from this world to the other as kinsmen receive a friend on his return end of chapter 16 recording by jyoti taravanath chapter 17 of dhammapada translated by max muller this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti taravanath chapter 17 anger 221 let a man leave anger let him forsake pride let him overcome all bondage no sufferings befall the man who is not attached to name and form and who calls nothing his own 222 he who holds back rising anger like a rolling chariot him i call a real driver other people are but holding the reins 223 let a man overcome anger by love let him overcome evil by good let him overcome the greedy by liberality the liar by truth 224 speak the truth do not yield to anger give if thou art asked for little by these three steps thou wilt go near the gods 225 the sages who endure nobody and who always control their body they will go to the unchangeable place nirvana where if they have gone they will suffer no more 226 those who are ever watchful who study day and night and who strive after nirvana their passions will come to an end 227 this is an old saying o atula this is not only of today they blame him who sits silent they blame him who speaks much they also blame him who says little there is no one on earth who is not blamed 228 there never was there never will be nor is there now a man who is always blamed or a man who is always praised 229 230 but he whom those who discriminate praise continually day after day as without blemish wise rich in knowledge and virtue who would dare to blame him like a coin made of gold from the gambu river 
even the gods praise him he is praised even by brahman 231 beware of bodily anger and control thy body leave the sins of the body and with thy body practice virtue 232 beware of the anger of the tongue and control thy tongue leave the sins of the tongue and practice virtue with thy tongue 233 beware of the anger of the mind and control thy mind leave the sins of the mind and practice virtue with thy mind 234 the wise who control their body who control their tongue the wise who control their mind are indeed well controlled end of chapter 17 Recording by Jyoti Tarawadt. Chapter Eighteen of Dhamma Pada, translated by Max Muller. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording. by jyoti tarvanat chapter 18 impurity 235 thou art now like a sea leaf the messenger of death yama have come near to thee thou standest at the door of thy departure and thou hast no provision for thy journey 236 make thyself an island work hard be wise when thy impurities are blown away and thou art free from guilt thou wilt enter into the heavenly world of the elect arya 237 thy life has come to an end thou art come near to death yama there is no resting place for thee on the road and thou hast no provision for thy journey 238 make thyself an island work hard be wise when thy impurities are blown away and thou art free from guilt thou wilt not enter again into birth and decay 239 let a wise man blow off the impurities of his self as a smith blows off the impurities of silver one by one little by little and from time to time 240 as the impurity which springs from the iron when it springs from it destroys it thus do a transgressor's own works lead him to the evil path 241 the taint of prayers is non repetition the taint of houses non repair the taint of the body is sloth the taint of a watchman thoughtlessness 242 bad conduct is the taint of woman greediness the taint of a benefactor tainted or all evil ways in this world and in the next 243 but there is a taint worse than all taints ignorance is the greatest taint o mendicants throw off that taint and become taintless 244 life is easy to live for a man who is without shame a crow hero a mischief maker an insulting bold and wretched fellow 
245. But life is hard to live for a modest man who always looks for what is pure, who is disinterested, quiet, spotless, and intelligent. 246. He who destroys life, who speaks untruth, who in this world takes what is not given him, who goes to another man's wife. 247. And the man who gives himself to drinking intoxicating liquors, he even in this world, digs up his own root. 248. O man, know this, that the unrestrained are in a bad state. Take care that greediness and vice do not bring thee to grief for a long time. 249. The world gives according to their faith or according to their pleasure. If a man frets about the food and the drink given to others, he will find no rest either by day or by night. 250. He in whom that feeling is destroyed and taken out with the very root finds rest by day and by night. 251. There is no fire like passion. There is no shark like hatred. There is no snare like folly. There is no torrent like greed. 252. The fault of others is easily perceived, but that of oneself is difficult to perceive. A man winnows his neighbor's faults like chaff, but his own fault he hides as a cheat hides the bad die from the gambler. 253. If a man looks after the faults of others, and is always inclined to be offended, his own passions will grow, and he is far from the destruction of passions. 254. There is no path through the air. A man is not a samana by outward acts. The world delights in vanity. The Tathagatas the Buddhas are free from vanity. 255. There is no path through the air. A man is not a samana by outward acts. No creatures are eternal, but the awakened Buddha are never shaken. End of chapter 18. Recording by Jyoti Taravanath. Chapter 19 of Dhammapada Translated by Max Muller This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jyoti Taravanath Chapter 19 The Just 256 257 A man is not just if he carries a matter by violence. No. He who distinguishes both right and wrong, who is learned and leads others, not by violence, but by law and equity, and who is guarded by the law and intelligent, he is called just. 258. A man is not learned because he talks much. He who is patient, free from hatred and fear, he is called learned. 259. A man is not a supporter of the law because he talks much. Even if a man has learnt little but sees the law bodily, he is a supporter of the law, a man who never neglects the law. 260. A man is not an elder because his head is grey. His age may be ripe, but he is called old in vain. 261. He in whom there is truth, virtue, love, restraint, moderation, he who is free from impurity and is wise, he is called an elder. 262. An envious, greedy, dishonest man does not become respectable 
by means of much talking only or by the beauty of his complexion 263 he in whom all this is destroyed and taken out with the very root he when freed from hatred and vice is called respectable 264 not by tonsure does an undisciplined man who speaks falsehood become a samana can a man be a samana who is held captive by desire and greediness 265 he who always quiets the evil whether small or large he is called a samana a quiet man because he has quieted all evil 266 a man is not a mendicant bhikshu simply because he asks others for alms he who adopts the whole law is a bhikshu not he who only begs 267 he who is above good and evil who is chaste who with knowledge passes through the world he indeed is called a bhikshu 268 269 a man is not a muni because he observes silence mona that is mauna if he is foolish and ignorant but the wise who taking the balance chooses the good and avoids evil he is a muni and is a muni thereby he who in this world weighs both sides is called a muni 270 a man is not an elect arya because he endures living creatures because he has pity on all living creatures therefore is a man called arya 271 272 not only by discipline and vows not only by much learning not by entering into a trance not by sleeping alone do i earn the happiness of release which no worldling can know bhikshu be not confident as long as thou hast not attained the extinction of desires end of chapter 19 recording by jyoti taravanat chapter 20 of dhammapada translated by max mula this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti taravanat chapter 20 the way 273 the best of ways is the eightfold the best of truths the four words the best of virtues passionlessness the best of men who has eyes to see 274 this is the way there is no other that leads to the purifying of intelligence go on this way everything else is the deceit of mara the tempter 275 if you go on this way you will make an end of pain the way was preached by me when i had understood the removal of the thorns in the flesh 276 you yourself must make an effort the tathagatas buddhas are only preachers the thoughtful who enter the way are freed from the bondage of mara 277 all created things perish he who knows and sees this becomes passive in pain this is the way to purity 278 all created things are grief and pain he who knows and sees this becomes passive in pain this is the way that leads to purity 279 all forms or unreal 
he who knows and sees this becomes passive in pain this is the way that leads to purity 280 he who does not rouse himself when it is time to rise who though young and strong is full of sloth whose will and thought are weak that lazy and idle man will never find the way to knowledge 281 watching his speech well restrained in mind let a man never commit any wrong with his body let a man but keep these three roads of action clear and he will achieve the way which is taught by the wise 282 through zeal knowledge is gotten through lack of zeal knowledge is lost let a man who knows this double path of gain and loss thus place himself that knowledge may grow 283 cut down the whole forest of lust not a tree only danger comes out of the forest of lust when you have cut down both the forest of lust and its undergrowth then bhikshus you will be rid of the forest and free 284 so long as the love of man towards women even the smallest is not destroyed so long is his mind in bondage as the calf that drinks milk is to its mother 285 cut out the love of self like an autumn lotus with thy hand cherish the road of peace nirvana has been shown by the sugata buddha 286 here i shall dwell in the rain here in winter and summer thus the fool meditates and does not think of his death 287 death comes and carries off that man praised for his children and flocks his mind distracted as a flood carries off a sleeping village 288 sons are no help nor a father nor relations there is no help from kinsfolk for one whom death has seized 289 a wise and good man who knows the meaning of this should quickly clear the way that leads to nirvana end of chapter 20 recording by jyoti taravanath chapter 21 of dhammapada translated by max muller this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti taravanat chapter 21 miscellaneous 290 if by leaving a small pleasure one sees a great pleasure let a wise man leave the small pleasure and look to the great 291 he who by causing pain to others wishes to obtain pleasure for himself he entangled in the bonds of hatred will never be free from hatred 292 what ought to be done is neglected what ought not to be done is done the desires of unruly thoughtless people are always increasing 293 but they whose whole watchfulness is always directed to their body who do not follow what ought not to be done and who steadfastly do what ought to be done the desires of such watchful and wise people will come to an end 294 a true brahmana goes scatheless though he have killed father and mother and two valiant kings though he has destroyed a kingdom with all its subjects 295 a true brahmana goes scatheless though he have killed a father and mother and two holy kings and an eminent man besides 296 the disciples of gotama buddha are always well awake 
and their thoughts day and night are always set on buddha 297 the disciples of gautama are always well awake and their thoughts day and night are always set on the law 298 the disciples of gautama are always well awake and their thoughts day and night are always set on the church 299 the disciples of gautama are always well awake and their thoughts day and night are always set on their body 300 the disciples of gautama are always well awake and their mind day and night always delights in compassion 301 the disciples of gautama are always well awake and their mind day and night always delights in meditation 302 it is hard to leave the world to become a friar it is hard to enjoy the world hard is the monastery painful are the houses painful it is to dwell with equals to share everything in common and the itinerant mendicant is beset with pain therefore let no man be an itinerant mendicant and he will not be beset with pain three zero three whatever place a faithful virtuous celebrated and wealthy man chooses there he is respected three zero four good people shine from afar like the snowy mountains bad people are not seen like arrows shot by night three zero five he alone who without ceasing practices the duty of sitting alone and sleeping alone he subduing himself will rejoice in the destruction of all desires alone as if living in a forest end of chapter 21 recording by jyoti taravanat chapter 22 of dhammapada translated by max muller this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jyoti Taravanat. Chapter 22 The Downward Course 306 He who says what is not goes to hell. He also who, having done a thing, says I have not done it. After death, both are equal they are men with evil deeds in the next world 307 many men whose shoulders are covered with the yellow gown are ill-conditioned and unrestrained such evil doers by their evil deeds go to hell 308 better it would be to swallow a heated iron ball like flaring fire than that a bad unrestrained fellow should live on the charity of the land three zero nine four things does a reckless man gain who covets his neighbor's wife a bad reputation an uncomfortable bed thirdly punishment and lastly hell 310 there is bad reputation and the evil way to hell there is the short pleasure of the frightened in the arms of the frightened and the king imposes heavy punishment therefore let no man think of his neighbor's wife 311 as a grass blade if badly grasped cuts the arm badly practiced asceticism leads to hell 312 an act carelessly performed a broken valve 
and hesitating obedience to discipline all this brings no great reward 313 if anything is to be done let a man do it let him attack it vigorously a careless pilgrim only scatters the dust of his passions more widely 314 an evil deed is better left undone for a man repents of it afterwards a good deed is better done for having done it one does not repent 315 like a well-guarded frontier fort with defences within and without so let a man guard himself not a moment should escape for they who allow the right moment to pass suffer pain when they are in hell 316 they who are ashamed of what they ought not to be ashamed of and are not ashamed of what they ought to be ashamed of such men embracing false doctrines enter the evil path 317 they who fear when they ought not to fear and fear not when they ought to fear such men embracing false doctrines enter the evil path 318 they who forbid when there is nothing to be forbidden and forbid not when there is something to be forbidden such men embracing false doctrines enter the evil path 319 they who know what is forbidden as forbidden and what is not forbidden as not forbidden such men embracing the true doctrine enter the good path end of chapter 22 recording by jyoti taravanath chapter 23 of dhammapada translated by max muller this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti taravanath chapter 23 the elephant 320 silently shall i endure abuse as the elephant in battle endures the arrow sent from the bow for the world is ill-natured 321 they lead a tamed elephant to battle the king mounts a tamed elephant the tamed is the best among men he who silently endures abuse 322 mules are good if tamed and noble sindhu horses and elephants with large tusks but he who tames himself is better still 323 for with these animals does no man reach the untrodden country nirvana where a tamed man goes on a tamed animal namely on his own well tamed self 324 the elephant called dhanapalaka his temples running with sap and difficult to hold does not eat a morsel when bound the elephant longs for the elephant grove 325 if a man becomes fat and a great eater if he is sleepy and rolls himself about that fool like a hog fed on wash is born again and again 326 this mind of mine went formerly wandering about as it liked as it listed as it pleased but i shall now hold it in thoroughly as a rider who holds the hook holds in the furious elephant 327 be not thoughtless watch your thoughts draw yourself out of the evil way like an elephant sunk in mud 328 if a man 
find a prudent companion who walks with him is wise and lives soberly he may walk with him overcoming all dangers happy but considerate 329 if a man find no prudent companion who walks with him is wise and lives soberly let him walk alone like a king who has left his conquered country behind like an elephant in the forest 330 it is better to live alone there is no companionship with a fool let a man walk alone let him commit no sin with few wishes like an elephant in the forest 331 if an occasion arises friends are pleasant enjoyment is pleasant whatever be the cause a good work is pleasant in the hour of death the giving up of all grief is pleasant 332 pleasant in the world is the state of a mother pleasant the state of a father pleasant the state of a samana pleasant the state of a brahmana 333 pleasant is virtue lasting to old age pleasant is a faith firmly rooted pleasant is attainment of intelligence pleasant is avoiding of sins end of chapter 23 recording by jyoti taravanat chapter 24 of dhammapada translated by max muller this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jyoti Taravanat. Chapter 24 Thirst. 334. The thirst of a thoughtless man grows like a creeper. He runs from life to life, like a monkey seeking fruit in the forest. 335. Whomsoever this fierce thirst overcomes, full of poison, in this world, his sufferings increase like the abounding birana grass. 336. He who overcomes this fierce thirst, difficult to be conquered in this world, sufferings will fall off from him like water drops from a lotus leaf 337 this salutary word i tell you do ye as many as are here assembled dig up the root of thirst as he who wants the sweet-scented usira root must dig up the birana grass that mara the temper may not crush you again and again as the stream crushes the reeds 338 as a tree even though it has been cut down is firm so long as its root is safe and grows again thus unless the feeders of thirst are destroyed the pain of life will return again and again 339 he whose thirst running towards pleasure is exceedingly strong in the thirty-six channels the waves will carry away that misguided man namely his desires which are set on passion 340 the channels run everywhere the creeper of passion stands sprouting if you see the creeper springing up cut its root by means of knowledge 341 
a creature's pleasures are extravagant and luxurious sunk in lust and looking for pleasure men undergo again and again birth and decay three forty two men driven on by thirst run about like a snared hare held in fetters and bonds they undergo pain for a long time again and again three forty three men driven on by thirst run about like a snared hare let therefore the mendicant drive out the thirst by striving after passionless for himself 344 he who having got rid of the forest of lust that is after having reached nirvana gives himself over to forest life that is to lust and who when removed from the forest that is from lust runs to the forest that is to lust look at that man though free he runs into bondage 345 wise people do not call that a strong fetter which is made of iron wood or hemp far stronger is the care for precious stones and rings for sons and a wife 346 that fetter wise people call strong which drags down yields but is difficult to undo after having cut this at last people leave the world free from cares and leaving desires and pleasures behind 347 those who are slaves to passions run down with the stream of desires as a spider runs down the web which he has made himself when they have cut this at last wise people leave the world free from cares leaving all affection behind 348 give up what is before give up what is behind give up what is in the middle when thou goest to the other shore of existence if thy mind is altogether free thou wilt not again enter into birth and decay 349 if a man is tossed about by doubts full of strong passions and yearning only for what is delightful his thirst will grow more and more and he will indeed make his fetters strong 350 if a man delights in quieting doubts and always reflecting dwells on what is not delightful the impurity of the body he certainly will remove nay he will cut the fetter of mara 351 he who has reached consummation who does not tremble who is without thirst and without sin he has broken all the thorns of life this will be his last body 352 he who is without thirst and without affection who understands the words and their interpretation who knows the order of letters those which are before and which are after he has received his last body he is called the great sage the great man 353 i have conquered all i know all in all conditions of life i am free from taint i have left all and through the destruction of thirst i am free having learnt myself whom shall i teach 354 the gift of the law exceeds all gifts the sweetness of the law exceeds all sweetness 
the delight in the law exceeds all delights the extinction of thirst overcomes all pain 355 pleasures destroy the foolish if they look not for the other shore the foolish by his thirst for pleasures destroys himself as if he were his own enemy 356 the fields are damaged by weeds mankind is damaged by passion therefore a gift bestowed on the passionless brings great reward 357 the fields are damaged by weeds mankind is damaged by hatred therefore a gift bestowed on those who do not hate brings great reward 358 the fields are damaged by weeds mankind is damaged by vanity therefore a gift bestowed on those who are free from vanity brings great reward 359 the fields are damaged by weeds mankind is damaged by lust therefore a gift bestowed on those who are free from lust brings great reward end of chapter 24 recording by jyoti taravanat chapter 25 of dhammapada translated by max muller this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti taravanat chapter 25 the big shoe mendicant 360 restraint in the eye is good good is restraint in the ear in the nose restraint is good good is restraint in the tongue 361 in the body restraint is good good is restraint in speech in thought restraint is good good is restrained in all things a big shoe restrained in all things is freed from all pain 362 he who controls his hand he who controls his feet he who controls his speech he who is well controlled he who delights inwardly who is collected who is solitary and content him they call bhikshu 363 the bhikshu who controls his mouth who speaks wisely and calmly who teaches the meaning and the law his word is sweet 364 he who dwells in the law delights in the law meditates on the law follows the law that bhikshu will never fall away from the true law 365 let him not despise what he has received nor ever envy others a mendicant who envies others does not obtain peace of mind 366 a bhikshu who though he receives little does not despise what he has received even the gods will praise him if his life is pure and if he is not slothful 367 he who never identifies himself with name and form and does not grieve over what is no more he indeed is called a bhikshu 
368 the bhikshu who acts with kindness who is calm in the doctrine of buddha will reach the quiet place nirvana cessation of natural desires and happiness 369 o bhikshu empty this boat if emptied it will go quickly having cut off passion and hatred thou wilt go to nirvana 370 cut off the five senses leave the five rise above the five a bhikshu who has escaped from the five fetters he is called Vogatina, saved from the flood 371 meditate o bhikshu and be not heedless do not direct thy thought to what gives pleasure that thou mayest not for thy heedlessness have to swallow the iron ball in hell and that thou mayest not cry out when burning this is pain 372 without knowledge there is no meditation without meditation there is no knowledge he who has knowledge and meditation is near unto nirvana 373 a bhikshu who has entered his empty house and whose mind is tranquil feels a more than human delight when he sees the law clearly 374 as soon as he has considered the origin and destruction of the elements khanda of the body he finds happiness and joy which belongs to those who know the immortal nirvana 375 and this is the beginning here for a wise bhikshu watchfulness over the senses contentedness restrained under the law keep noble friends whose life is pure and who are not slothful 376 let him live in charity let him be perfect in his duties then in the fullness of delight he will make an end of suffering 377 as the vasika plant sheds its withered flowers men should shed passion and hatred o ye bhikshus 378 the bhikshu whose body and tongue and mind are quieted who is collected and has rejected the baits of the world he is called quiet 379 arouse thyself by thyself examine thyself by thyself thus self-protected and attentive wilt thou live happily o bhikshu 380 for self is the lord of self self is the refuge of self therefore curb thyself as the merchant curbs a good horse 381 the bhikshu full of delight who is calm in the doctrine of buddha will reach the quiet place nirvana cessation of natural desires and happiness 382 he who even as a young bhikshu applies himself to the doctrine of buddha brightens up this world like the moon when free from clouds End of chapter 25 Recording by Jyoti Tharavanat
Chapter Twenty Six of Dhammapada, translated by Max Muller. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jyoti Taravanat. Chapter Twenty Six, The Brahmana, Arhat. Three Eighty Three. Stop the stream valiantly. Drive away desires, O Brahmana. When you have understood the destruction of all that was made, you will understand that which was not made. 384. If the Brahmana has reached the other shore in both laws, in restraint and contemplation, all bonds vanish from him who has obtained knowledge 385 he for whom there is neither this nor that shore nor both him the fearless and unshackled i call indeed a brahmana 386 he who is thoughtful blameless settled dutiful without passions and who has attained the highest end him i call indeed a brahmana 387 the sun is bright by day the moon shines by night the warrior is bright in his armor the brahmana is bright in his meditation but buddha the awakened is bright with splendor day and night 388 because a man is rid of evil therefore he is called brahmana because he walks quietly therefore he is called a samana because he has sent away his own impurities therefore he is called pravargita pabagita a pilgrim 389 no one should attack a brahmana but no brahmana if attacked should let himself fly at his aggressor woe to him who strikes a brahmana more woe to him who flies at his aggressor 390 it advantages a brahmana not a little if he holds his mind back from the pleasures of life when all wish to endure has vanished pain will cease 391 him i call indeed a brahmana who does not offend by body word or thought and is controlled on these three points 392 after a man has once understood the law as taught by the well-awakened buddha let him worship it carefully as the brahmana worships the sacrificial fire 393 a man does not become a brahmana by his plaited hair by his family or by birth in whom there is truth and righteousness he is blessed he is a brahmana 394 what is the use of plaited hair o fool what of the ramiant of goatskins within thee there is ravening but the outside thou makest clean 395 the man who wears dainty raiments who is emaciated and covered with veins who lives alone in the forest and meditates him i call indeed a brahmana 396 i do not call a man a brahmana because of his origin or of his mother he is indeed arrogant and he is wealthy but the poor who is free from all attachments him i call indeed a brahmana 397 him i call indeed a brahmana who has cut all fetters who never trembles is independent 
and unshackled 398 him i call indeed a brahmana who has cut the strap and the thong the chain with all that pertains to who has burst the bar and is awakened 399 him i call indeed a brahmana who though he has committed no offence endures reproach bonds and stripes who has endurance for his force and strength for his army 400 him i call indeed a brahmana who is free from anger dutiful virtuous without appetite who is subdued and has received his last body 401 him i call indeed a brahmana who does not cling to pleasures like water on a lotus leaf like a mustard seed on the point of a needle 402 him i call indeed a brahmana who even here knows the end of his suffering has put down his burden and is unshackled 403 him i call indeed a brahmana whose knowledge is deep who possesses wisdom who knows the right way and the wrong and has attained the highest end 404 him i call indeed a brahmana who keeps aloof both from laymen and from mendicants who frequents no houses and has but few desires 405 him i call indeed a brahmana who finds no fault with other beings whether feeble or strong and does not kill nor cause slaughter 406 him i call indeed a brahmana who is tolerant with the intolerant mild with fault finders and free from passion among the passionate 407 him i call indeed a brahmana from whom anger and hatred pride and envy have dropped like a mustard seed from the point of a needle 408 him i call indeed a brahmana who utters true speech instructive and free from harshness so that he offend no one 409 him i call indeed a brahmana who takes nothing in the world that is not given him be it long or short small or large good or bad 410 him i call indeed a brahmana who fosters no desires for this world or for the next has no inclinations and is unshackled 411 him i call indeed a brahmana who has no interests and when he has understood the truth does not say how how and who has reached the depth of the immortal 412 him i call indeed a brahmana who in this world is above good and evil above the bondage of both free from grief from sin and from impurity 413 him i call indeed a brahmana who is bright like the moon pure serene undisturbed and in whom all gaiety is extinct 414 him i call indeed a brahmana who has traversed this miry road the impassable world and its vanity who has gone through and reached the other shore is thoughtful guideless free from doubts 
free from attachment and content 415 him i call indeed a brahmana who in this world leaving all desires travels about without a home and in whom all concupiscence is extinct 416 him i call indeed a brahmana who leaving all longings travels about without a home and in whom all covetousness is extinct 417 him i call indeed a brahmana who after leaving all bondage to men has risen above all bondage to the gods and is free from all and every bondage 418 him i call indeed a brahmana who has left what gives pleasure and what gives pain who is cold and free from all germs of renewed life the hero who has conquered all the worlds 419 him i call indeed a brahmana who knows the destruction and the return of beings everywhere who is free from bondage welfaring sugata and awakened buddha 420 him i call indeed a brahmana whose path the gods do not know nor spirits gandharvas nor men whose passions are extinct and who is an arhat venerable 421 him i call indeed a brahmana who calls nothing his own whether it be before behind or between who is poor and free from the love of the world 422 him i call indeed a brahmana the manly the noble the hero the great sage the conqueror the impassable the accomplished the awakened 423 him i call indeed a brahmana who knows his former abodes who sees heaven and hell has reached the end of births is perfect in knowledge a sage and whose perfections are all perfect end of chapter 26 end of dhammapada translated by max muller recording by jyoti tarawadt